um, on your knees like I am, you might want to sit on a block to hold you up a little, hold your hips a little higher. Just getting nice and comfortable. Today we're going to do some, a little bit of playful balancing and a little bit of twisting and a little bit of pranayama breathing to help us with our balancing and our overall well-being. So just taking a few deep breaths and coming into space after your busy mornings. Noticing the earth below you, the earth on your legs, the earth on your buttocks, having a nice tall spine. Just taking some nice deep breaths. Thank you all for being here. You're here for yourselves and for each other, erasing all of our vibration. Scanning your body for any areas of tightness or stiffness and gently exhaling into those areas. And noticing your mind. There may be thoughts running around from what you've been doing this morning. Acknowledge them and then let them go. This is now your time, your self-care self time. Thinking about what's been going on in your life and thinking about setting an intention for your practice today. So it might be just to relax or to breathe a little more, to move a little more, to overcome some stiffness. It may be just to be curious today in your practice and try a few things. But noticing as you go through the asanas, if there's anything that doesn't feel right, it's okay to stop and just relax into a child pose or into savasana until you're ready to continue. I'm going to open the practice with an OM. So you may join me if you like, but you don't have to. We're going to take a big breath in and then let it go. Another breath in. Oh. And then coming into a child's pose. So bringing your knees apart and your feet together, bringing your buttocks down to your heels and then walking your hands gently forward, taking your body down into a nice relaxing child's pose. Just taking some deep breaths here. Noticing how you feel in your lower back and your upper back. Breathing into any tension you might have in those areas. Taking a couple more breaths here. And then coming into all fours. Having your knees underneath your hips and your hands with your fingers spread widely apart, we're just going to move our body in a clockwise direction, starting to warm through the body, starting to get some movement into some of our joints. And while you're doing this, moving your hands with the fingertips out to the side, stretching through the wrists and the fingers and then if it's comfortable for you moving your fingers so they're pointing back towards your body and just moving in the other direction nice and gently 
and then taking them back into a forward position. And we're going to have a nice elongated spine. And we're going to do some cat cows as you inhale, lifting through the chest and lifting your gaze. And as you exhale, lifting your back up towards the ceiling and looking down through your knees towards your feet. And continuing this movement as we warm up our spine, we have a little bit of movement in a lot of places all the way along the vertebrae. Let's continue on for five more breaths. And then coming into a position with your standing on your knees, if that's comfortable for you. And we're going to do some movements with our spines. We're going to take our arms up nice and tall. And then we're going to go from one side to the other. Exhaling each time we go to the side and inhaling as we come to the center. We'll go one more on each side. And then coming back down to sitting on your heels and slide your hands forward back into a child's pose. Just one more stretch through that lower, lower back and up through your shoulders. Bringing your forehead down towards the mat. Taking two more breaths here. And then coming into your first downward dog. So we're going to tuck our toes underneath our, and then as we exhale, we're going to take our hips up towards the sky or the ceiling. Coming into our first downward dog for the practice. And we're going to walk our heels down towards the mat. So getting a nice stretch through the back of our legs, through our shoulders getting some movement into our body, starting to warm it up. And then coming down onto your knees, taking your hands a little bit forward and then raising your chest into a half upward dog. Nice, and then exhale. Tucking your toes back under and bring your hands back a little, back into a downward dog. Just stretching that out. We can stay here for a couple of breaths. And then we're going to go back into an upward dog again. Now this time, you can go to your knees and go to the upward dog, or you can just roll your toes over and have your knees off the ground. So it's whichever you prefer. There's two options. So we're going from the upward dog and then we either bring our knees forward and lift our chest into upward dog, feeling that compression in our lower back, or you can have your knees off the ground. So it's a little bit more intense. And then we're gonna go back up to downward dog. We're gonna keep moving through this upward dog and downward dog. We'll do five more. So you're just going at your own pace. So as you bring your body forward, inhaling into upward dog, and then tucking your toes under and exhaling into downward dog. Just staying in each one for a couple of breaths. And 
noticing how that's feeling on your wrists as well. It's a little intense. Maybe stick to the half version with your knees on the ground. And we'll do two more. And then coming back into child's pose with your knees wide and your feet together, bring your buttocks to your heels and walking your hands forward, bringing your forehead down to the mat. We'll stay here and rest for about three breaths. Notice how your lower back is feeling, whether it's starting to warm up a little and you're finding that you can move a little more. Nice, and then we're gonna come up into a standing position and we're gonna do a few rounds of the sun salute. So just giving your body a little bit of a shake around. Okay, so you can Watch me through the first set if you like, or just come with me if most of you know what we're doing here. I'll just walk you through the first one in any case. So we're starting off um, in a standing position. We're going to inhale, lift our arms up into mountain pose, and then we're going to exhale, fold forward, and then inhale, lifting the chest and lifting the spine, and then exhale, stepping back into either a, a, a full plank or a half plank, depending on what you wanna do. And then exhale, bringing your chest slowly down to the mat, bending at your elbows. Then we're gonna inhale, lift up into an upward dog. And then exhale, tucking your toes under, coming up into a downward dog. And then raising your gaze towards your hands and stepping the feet forward into a forward fold. Then inhale, lift through the spine, lifting your chest. Exhale, drawing your chest towards your legs. And then inhale, come all the way back up to a mountain pose and bring your hands back to heart center to Anjali Mudra. So that's one round. Let's do four more rounds. Okay, so we're starting off inhaling, lifting our arms. I'm just gonna check that everyone's on mute here. Okay, for some reason I've got, okay, hopefully that's right now. Okay, so let's go. Inhaling, lifting it all the way up. Exhaling, folding forward. Then inhale, lifting through the spine, lifting the chest. Exhale, bringing your chest towards your legs and stepping back into either a high plank or a low plank. Slowly exhaling as you bring your body down towards the mat. Inhale, lift your chest, lift your gaze. And then exhale, tucking your toes under and pressing up into a downward dog. Raising your gaze towards your hands and step forward into a forward fold, Paschimottasana. And then inhale, lengthening the spine. Exhale, drawing the chest towards your legs. And then inhale, come all the way back up. And hands back to heart center. Nice. Let's go again. So I'm going to watch you this time, but I'll still talk you through. So inhale, lifting your hands, exhaling, folding forward. And then inhale, lift through the spine, lengthening the spine. And then exhale as you step back into a downward dog. Nice. Then raise your gaze towards your hands as you step forward. That's it. Oh, I think we got a bit mixed up there. So most of you are in downward dog 
and then coming forward into an upward dog. And stepping your feet forward into a forward fold. Inhale, come all the way up. Sorry, ladies, I think I got mixed up because I wasn't doing it with you. So we go one more time. Inhale, lifting your hands, lifting your gaze, exhaling, folding forward. Inhale, lengthen through the spine, lift your chest. Exhale, draw your chest towards your legs. And then stepping back into high plank or low plank. And then slowly lowering your body down to the mat, bending at your elbows. Inhale, lifting through the chest. Exhale, tucking your toes under and bring your hips up towards the ceiling. And then taking your gaze forward and stepping forward, bring your feet towards your hands into a forward fold. Inhale, lifting through the chest. And exhale, bring your chest towards your legs. And then inhale, come all the way back up. Back to heart center. Good work. Okay, let's do a little bit of hip opening while we're here. So coming down into um, having your feet about hip width apart, with your toes pointing out, we're going to slightly lower the body down to a deep squat position. If you find this is a bit tricky, you can come up a little higher. So bring your body down towards the mat and using your elbows to gently press your knees out to the side, chest up nice and tall. We'll stay here for three breaths. Good. And then bring your hands down towards the mat and coming down into a position, laying on your back with your knees hugged up to your chest. And just rolling the body around in this position. Just massaging through your lower back. And then taking your arms out to the side and dropping your knees to the left and looking to the right. Stretching through our lower back here. Inhale to the center and then exhale, knees to the right, looking to the left. Just taking a couple of breaths. And then knees back to the center. We're going to move into a little bit of um, warrior one and warrior two. So coming back up to a standing position. And we'll start with warrior one. So this helps with some opening through the hip area. We're going to take our right, our left foot out slightly to the side, bring the toes slightly out and step forward with the right foot. And we're going to inhale, lift our arms, raise our gaze in our chest and then bending that um, front knee, so the right knee. The right knee should be stacked on top of the right ankle. And then taking your arms back into a warrior two position with your gaze on the front fingers on the right arm. And then we're going to take the arm up towards the sky and bring the left arm down towards the back of your left knee. And then bringing both hands down all the way down to the mat to frame that front foot and turning the left foot so it's facing forward. And then we're going to take the right hand and either have it on the ground next to the right foot or near the ankle, or if you have a block, you can put it on the block. And the left hand, we're going to lift up towards the sky. So gazing up towards the left hand. And we're going to stay here for five breaths. Noticing the stretch through the back of your right foot, your right leg. And 
and then slowly bring that left hand back down towards the mat. And then inhale, bring our hands all the way up to the sky and hands back to Anjali Mudra. And then walk our feet back together again and we'll try it on the other side. Okay, so this time we've got the right foot slightly out towards the side and we're gonna take our left foot forward. We've got our hips and our shoulders facing squarely forward. We're going to inhale, lift our hands, lift our gaze and bend through that left knee. That's it. Feeling that nice stretch through the hip flexor on the right side. Then we're gonna take our hands into warrior two gazing at the left hand, still with the front leg bent. And then we're gonna inhale and take the left hand towards the sky and the right hand to the back of the right knee. Just really giving it a nice stretch. And then we're going to fold forward and bring both hands down to the mat and straightening out through that front leg. And then we're going to take the left hand towards the mat or towards your ankle. And the right hand is going to go up to the sky into a triangle pose, keeping your eyes on that right hand and noticing the stretch through the back of your left leg. Stay here for three more breaths. And then bringing that right hand back down to the mat, framing the left foot. Inhale, lifting your hands all the way up to the sky, stretching through and hands back to Anjali Mudra. And then give your legs a little shake. Okay, from here, we're going to go into a, a downward dog and then we're gonna go to a three-legged dog and then into an aeroplane pose. So you've done this one before. So we'll start off towards the front of our mat. We're gonna inhale, lift our arms, and then we're gonna exhale and fold forward. And we're gonna step back into a downward dog. Just getting comfortable here, spreading out through our hands, widening, widening our fingers, and using um, the palms of our hands against the mat to really steady ourselves. And then we're going to lift into a three-legged dog. If this is too intense, you can stay in a normal two-legged dog. If you'd like to challenge yourself a little further, you can bring that right heel down towards the mat and bend that left leg and take the foot across to the right side into a scorpion. And we'll stay here for three more breaths. And then returning that left leg down to the ground, paddling your heels towards the mat, rinsing that out. And then we're going to lift up the right leg with the foot, the toes facing towards the mat, bringing the left heel down towards the mat, stretching through the back of the left leg. And then if you'd like to take it into scorpion, bending the right knee and taking the foot, right foot across towards the left side, here for three breaths. And then bringing that foot back down and taking your feet out a little wider. And it's coming back up to Anjali Mudra. Okay, it's taking a couple of breaths here. Then we're going to take our left leg back and we're going to take our arms up and bring our hands down towards the mat. 
and take that left leg off the ground. Noticing your right foot, noticing how it's anchored to the ground, taking your toes out nice and wide, getting some nice balance there. And then when you're ready, you can take your hands off the mat and bring them into an aeroplane. Finding a gaze point just towards the top of your mat. Noticing all the little stabilizer muscles starting to come into play. Let's go one more breath. If you start to lose your balance, you can bring your left toe down towards the mat. And then take your hands down and then bring your leg down. Well done. And then coming back up. Let's give your legs a little shake and we'll try it on the other side. So this time on the left, taking the left foot, having the toes out nice and wide. So you've got a really good grip on the ground. You're really well anchored. Take the right foot back. And we're gonna inhale, bring our arms all the way up. And then exhale, take our hands down towards the mat and take our right foot off the mat. Have our toes pointing down towards the ground gazing point towards the top of our mat and when you're ready take your hands up into an aeroplane and we'll stay here for about three breaths you may notice that you're better on one side than the other that's it it's okay to keep that right toe on the ground and then when you're ready bring your hands back down to the mat and then bring your right foot down and then come back up. Nice work. Just shake that out. And we'll just add a little bit more balancing to that with a tree pose. So we're going to start on the right foot again. So opening up the toes of your right foot and just moving around in a circular position, noticing the three key anchor points on your toes. On your, on your foot, so there's one just behind your little toe, there's one behind your big toe, and one near your heel. So getting those nice and solid. And then we're gonna bring the left foot either up to your calf, or you can take it um, a bit higher up your leg, up towards your thigh. Try not to have it um, against where your knee is. It's okay to lose, use something to help you steady your balance. And bring your hand into Anjali Mudra and let's stay here for three breaths, finding your gazing point and just noticing your breath. Let's go one more breath. Nice and then slowly lower your left foot down towards the mat. Well done, everyone was really steady. And then we'll go to the other side. So again, just moving your body in a slight circular position so you've noticed those three anchor points on your left foot and open your toes out so you've got a really good grip against the ground. And then we're gonna take the right foot either to our calf or a little higher up. Find your gaze point, steady yourself. Noticing your breath. And then when you're ready, bring your hands to Anjali Mudra and we're gonna stay here for three breaths. Oops. And one more breath. And then let it drop down, give it a shake out. So if you've ever had an injury on one side around the ankle area, you might find you stronger on one side than the other as I am. So it's just, we just have to keep working on that. So well done, and then we're gonna come down into the mat, onto our bottoms, buttocks down to the mat. And we're gonna go into uh, Pashi Mosatasana. So this is a seated forward bend. We're gonna raise our arms up, raise our chest and our gaze, and then we're gonna exhale and bring our hands down towards our shins ankles or toes, gazing 
towards the toes. And we're gonna stay here for five breaths. Just noticing that nice stretch through the back of your legs and through your lower back. Each time you exhale, see if you can take your forward fold a little deeper. One more breath here. And then releasing. And just give your shoulders a little bit of a bit of movement. And then we're going to go back into a Paschimottasana with a twist. So this time we're going to take our hands up and we're going to take our left hand towards the right foot or leg. And we're going to take our right hand out the back and just keeping our gaze towards our right big toe. Stay here for three breaths. So noticing a slight different sensation with the twist. And one more breath. And then inhale, reaching up. And then we're going to exhale, fold forward and take our right hand to the outside of our left foot and take our left hand out towards the back. Keeping our gaze on our left big toe. Staying here for three breaths and noticing that slight twist in the side and, and stretch down the left side of the leg. One more breath and then inhale, bring your arms up and exhale back to Anjali Mudra. And then we're going to go onto our back into Apanasana. We're going to hug our knees to our chest and we're going to rinse out some of that work that we've just done on our lower back just rolling your body in a circular motion massaging through your lumbar spine and then bringing your feet down towards the mat and taking your heels close to your buttocks and we're going to take our body up into a bridge pose so from this position placing your hands um, palms down to the mat as we inhale, we're going to lift through our hips and take our hips up towards the ceiling. So you can leave your hands here or you can take them underneath in the clasp position and draw your shoulders together. So this is a full bridge pose with the shoulder stretch. We're going to take five breaths here. Lifting as high as you can, really squeezing through the buttocks. Bring your chin towards your chest. And one more deep breath. And then releasing your hands, slowly lowering your spine down towards the mat. And hugging up your knees to your chest. And then we're going to go into an inversion. So from here, you can either take your feet straight up in the air. You can put your legs up against a wall or the side of the bed, whatever you have in your room or you can go up into a half shoulder stand. If you're in the shoulder stand, having your hands at your hips, bring your elbows a little bit towards each other. Everyone with their legs up in the air, just giving your feet some movement, shaking through your legs so they feel nice and light. And we're gonna stay here for 10 breaths. If you have your feet up the wall, you might like to take your legs out wide. If you're in a half shoulder stand, you might like to drop your feet over the top of your head into a plow pose. And we'll stay here for another three to five breaths.
and then slowly lowering your spine down towards the mat. And then rolling over to your tummy. So you'll be laying face down. We're just relaxing here for a couple of breaths to start with. And we're going to pop our hands underneath our hips. So if palms will be facing up with your hands just under your hips. We'll just take a couple of breaths here. And then we're going to go into a lotus pose. So with a lotus pose, we're going to inhale and we're going to lift our feet off the ground, pointing our toes forward. Really squeezing through the buttocks here. Go for two more breaths. And then releasing the feet down towards the mat and taking your hands from underneath you into a forward position. So you've got your hands facing forward. This next time we're going to go into a snake pose. So we're gonna bring our hands back and clasp them behind our buttock. And as we inhale, we're gonna lift through the chest and lift our gaze as we lift up through that front area giving that a nice stretch and clasping our hands, getting a nice stretch through the shoulder as well. One more breath here. And then release that down and release your hands. Just taking a couple of breaths here. And then we're going to move into a half boat pose. So a boat pose is where we take our hand and we reach back and grab our foot. Nice. Okay, and then we're going to inhale. We're going to lift through our chest and pull our foot back towards the back of the room. And you feel a nice stretch through the quad. And then release that one. And then we're going to move to the other side. So take your right hand back and grab hold of your right foot. I'm gonna inhale and lift through the chest and pull that foot towards the back of the room through your hand, feeling that nice stretch through the right thigh. Stay here for one more breath. And then release that one down. And then we're going to take it one step forward into a full boat pose. So this time we're going to inhale. We're going to lift our chest and we're going to reach back with both hands and grab our feet. Nice. And then lift up and we're going to take three breaths here. So as you take your breaths, you might find yourself rocking a little bit. That's all part of the boat pose. So getting a nice stretch through your shoulders, chest, quads and through the butt. One more breath and then let's release that down to the mat. Bring our hands in underneath our shoulders and we'll just lift up. Let's give that one more stretch through that area. Stretching it all the way through to the abdomen and then coming up onto all fours. Bring your knees forward. We'll do a couple of cat cow here just to release our spine after all of that work we've done. And one more child's pose, just giving that nice stretch through the lower back. Noticing how your spine is feeling now. Notice how your body is feeling. Tucking your toes under. We'll go up into a downward dog, just stretching out through the legs, paddling our heels down towards the mat. Nice full stretch. And then bring your knees down towards the mat and come into a comfortable comfortable seated position and we're going to do some 
pranayama breathing. So you can have your buttocks on the ground, or you can be kneeling or whatever suits you. Ah, oh, Jilda's got a good way of rolling her mat up, so she's got a bolster like me. Nice, so it's really comfortable in this position. So the pranayama breathing we're gonna do is the alter alternate nostril breathing. It's called uh, Nadi Shadhana. And the Nadi Shadhana is very good for um, making you feel nice and relaxed and releasing any anxiety. It's very good for the lungs and very good for just general well-being and balancing. So the way that we're gonna do it, we've done it before. So you take your, your two fingers towards your forehead and you use your thumb and your ring finger to um, control the air coming in and out of your nose. So I'll walk you through it and for those of you who've done it before, you can join me. Others might like to just watch the first round. So bringing your two fingers towards your forehead and having your thumb towards your right nostril and your ring finger towards your left nostril. So we're going to do a big deep inhalation and then an exhalation. And then we're gonna use our ring finger to block off the left nostril. And we're gonna inhale through the right and then put our thumb towards our right nostril and then lift our finger off our left nostril and exhale through the left. Then inhale through the left. Pause, block the, that, that side off and then exhale through the right. Then inhale through the left, the right. Block the right off and then exhale through the left and inhale through the left nostril. Block that off and exhale through the right. So continuing on for another five rounds. So one round is inhale through the right. Block that off, exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Block that off and then exhale through the right. So that's one full round. So go four more rounds, just at your own pace, using your own breath and just relaxing into the movement and the breathing process. Let's go one more round. And then taking your hands away, just taking a couple of nice deep breaths. And then relaxing into Savasana. So laying down on your back. And you might want to put a blanket over you. If you have a eye pillow, you might like to put the eye pillow on. And 
we're going to relax here for about five minutes. Nourishing your body with the energy from your yoga session. Letting it distill within your body. Reflecting back on your intention for your practice. Tuning into your breath and not controlling it in any way. Noticing the ground beneath your body, supporting you in your savasana. Softening your eyes. Noticing your heels on the ground, the back of your legs, buttocks, lower back, upper back, shoulders, back of your head and your hands. Noticing your breathing. and relaxing in your space. I'm going to rest in Savasana for another five minutes. Enjoy the peaceful grounding meditation as part of your yoga practice.
Noticing your breath in Savasana and being aware of the room that you're in, the floor beneath you. Taking a few more breaths and gently rolling to one side. Stretching your arms up above your head. And coming back into a seated position. When you're ready, ah, thank you for your beautiful energy today in your yoga practice. You've raised your vibration and those of the rest of the group and you can take that back to your family and your community. We're going to complete the yoga practice with an OM to seal off our space that supported us. So bringing our hands to our heart centre. We take a deep breath in and then let it go. And a deep breath in. Oh. Acknowledging the great work that you've done today. Let's bring your hands to your forehead for kind thoughts. And to your lips for kind words and to your heart, for a kind heart. Namaste. Just noticing how you're feeling now and how your mind is and try and take that with you for the rest of your day. Mm -hmm. how